Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. Let's build a couple little houses. Okay, I know I maybe went a little bit extra here, but it's still budget and I think the result was worth it. This module calls for two of these houses. One of them is 8x5 and the other one is 5x4. The 8x5 has a little extra sticking out for the fireplace, but we'll add that on later. For now, just cut out two chunks of EPS, 8x5 and 5x4. If you have a little wonky spot where your knife wasn't quite 90 degrees, it's fine. Just put your ruler on there and shave that bit off. Okay, now take some ready board and cut out 4.5 by 3.5 and, and another 7.5 by 4.5. Measure one quarter inch from all sides and mark it. Those marks are going to be for the ready board to sit on, just like we did with the tavern. Hit the ready board with some Super 77 and stick it on the EPS. Now you can grid this and cut a wood grain into it, just like we did with the tavern if you want. I did start out that way and base coated everything in brown, but then I figured you guys have seen that already, so maybe I should step it up a notch. So these are coffee stir sticks. They're about half the thickness and width of popsicle sticks. It makes them very easy to work with and also kind of a pain. They cut very easily with scissors, but they also warp if you get them wet, so no washes on this. Paint and glue are fine, though. Doing the board straight across looks a little odd, so I cut up a whole bunch of sticks. There's no real set length, use whatever is going to work for you. You can use snippers, but they do leave a ragged pinched edge, so maybe scissors or a knife would be better. Now lay out some painter's tape sticky side up and just lay all of the boards down. I made this a lot harder than it needed to be, trying to get the measurements right from the start. Don't worry about all that, just let them run long on the ends. Once you're all done getting them on, just trim the edge, spray them with Super 77, and stick it right to the foam. When you peel the tape, you will need to hold the sticks down in a few spots. So I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Clearly I measured something wrong. Whatever, it'll be fine. The area still got glue on it, so just put some more sticks on there. If the edge is a little rough, you can put a metal ruler on it and just shave off the rough bit with a sharp knife. Alright, now just do that again for the other floor. Here you can see I just let all the ends run long and then trimmed them off once I was done. These sticks are pretty easy to cut. One side was still long when I put it on the foam, so I just used the ruler and trimmed it off. If you can't cut all the way through them, that's fine. Just score them and then they'll be able to snap off. On to the buildings. The wall height we'll be using for the whole of Hero Kids is 2 inches unless there's some reason to make it bigger. So just go ahead and cut yourself a whole bunch of ready board in 2 inch strips. If you wanted to, you could even cut up a whole ready board into 2 inch strips. You'll use them eventually. So I know that my EPS is 5x4 here, but on the off chance that I messed something up, I just used the board itself to measure my wall length. When you cut the other two wall segments, keep in mind which board goes behind which other board so you can account for that extra thickness. I did the short wall on the inside, so it's a half inch shorter than it would be otherwise. Just put your other wall in place and butt the foam against it to find out where you need to cut. Using those wall pieces as your measuring sticks, cut out one more of the outside walls. Do a quick dry fit to make sure it's good, and then cut another of the inside wall. Same idea for the other house. Go ahead and peel all of them and texture it up. I won't be doing wattle and daub here, but something close to that? Just texture everything to fit your needs. I used a roller from Rumpel's Labs to make everything cobblestone. The module says... Uh, okay, so... Yeah, I, I misread the module. I combined the quote, well-maintained hunter's cabin, and the quote, wise woman's hovel made of stacked stone, on the little house, so... Um, oops. Yeah, it'll be fine. We'll just get something very interesting looking out of it. As to the larger one, it's only described as being ramshackle. These maps can be a little hard to read. The wider white block is a door, and the smaller gray blocks are windows. There aren't any on this one. Just using the mini to figure out how tall you need the door to be, put a little mark dead center and two more marks on the bottom the full width of the door, and then play connect the dots. You could use a little form of some kind, but it's fine to just freehand it. Cut it out with an X-Acto and don't forget to frame it somehow. I just did random stones here. Make sure to carry your framing method to the inside of the door too. And then do the same thing to the other wall using your door cutout as your guide. You might also notice here that it's on the wrong side. Oops again. 
Just scoot it over, or alternately you could texture the other side of the foam and cut it out where you have it marked and then it'll appear on the correct side, if that makes any sense. On the larger house you have some windows. I used the cutout of the door as a guide again, and then used the mini to figure out the height the window should be. After I cut the door out, I didn't like it, so I just cut a little bit more and made it a rectangular one instead. Cut out the window by poking through with an X-Acto knife, and then tilt the handle upwards to make sure that the blade is parallel to the surface. Then put the two long walls together so you can use the cut one as a guide. Just make sure to put them untextured sides together, or you'll end up having a repeat of your door on the wrong side. Then cut out the other window and door. One short wall has two windows on it, so I marked where they belong side to side, then use the other long wall as a guide for the window's height to keep everything the same. Now just cut them out and there you go. The other short wall is actually a fireplace, but I did it this way in case you didn't want the fireplace, you don't have to put it there. Just slap the wall up and leave it alone. Just keep in mind which walls are supposed to go on the inside of the other walls or it won't fit your floor anymore. Wipe off any squeeze out. Use the mat to make sure it's nice and level and hold it for a couple seconds to let the glue solidify. It helps to use a low temp glue gun here. All right, now we have a box that fits the floor, but it's a little fragile. Just run a bead of hot glue in each corner to beef it up. Put the bead down, give it a couple seconds to cool, and then wipe off the excess, leaving a clean line. You can use one of those plumber's wedge thingies if you don't want to use your finger. And then just glue up and bead the little house the exact same way. You could have cut the little triangle bit here on the short walls when you cut the wall out, but I never know what roof height I'm going to want until I see the building standing, so I prefer to just keep everything 2 inch strips for my own sanity. In this case, I went with a 2 inch roof height at the peak. Yes, I know that that is the same height as the wall, which is way out of proportion for most buildings, but trust me it works here. Just cut out 2 strips of the same length as the short walls and peel the paper off so it's easier to mark on. This pack of square dowels is just a couple bucks and has a whole bunch of different sizes in it. We'll be using a few of these. I want one on top of the roof for that central beam, so pick a size you like and mark that in the center of the roof panel. I also want this roof to have that multi-angle thing going on. I originally marked halfway between the beam edge and the edge of the roof, but I changed that to one-third and one-third across the top, and then one-third and half on the sides so your roof angle goes from the beam to here to here to the corner. You could just eyeball this on one half of a roof panel and use that piece as a guide to mark everything else up. Once you've got it down how you like, just connect the dots and cut it out. If your fur beast will let you. Maybe distract it with some paper. Okay, once you have one section worked out, or the little guide that I suggested making, use it as a guide for the other one. Then just glue them both on, to the underside of the building. Wait, what? It's fine, it's fine. Slice it off. The old hot glue should just peel right off, and then put them on the correct side. I figured you will see the inside of this if anyone bothers to actually look in the windows or something. So just cut some boards in there and hit it with the wire brush for a wood grain texture. Alright, we need roof supports because we're not going to do panels. I cut some barbecue skewer sticks down to length and then hot glued them in wherever the angle changes and then one in the center below where the beam goes. We don't actually want or need the whole beam, just a little bit sticking out the end to make it look like it's there. The walls were too floppy so I used some of the square dowel to put a support along the top edge. And the dowel you're going to see sticking out of the roof is a little too perfect so just cut some grain into it with an X-Acto. For cutting the little chunk off, I wanted to show you that you can use clippers if you keep going around it until it snaps off, but you're better off just using a saw like this. Don't glue these on yet, I'm not sure what I was thinking. I also put supports along the walls for the little house using the same measuring method. Hold it up, mark it, cut it, use the cut piece as your guide to make more. For the roof on this one, I cut some dowel ends at 45 degrees and glued them into a teepee shape. Then I glued some barbecue sticks to put a couple more supports on the long walls. This one will use roof panels, so you may not actually need to do that, but I like my stuff overbuilt. Alright, so back over to the bigger house. Sorry, get used to this, I'm all over the place. I decided to go with siding. It's maybe too modern, but I like it anyway. You can stack all the sticks the same as you did the stairs for the tavern, but again, all the boards being house length looks weird. 
So cut a bunch of sticks about twice to three times the length of a mini's height. Put down some more blue tape and stick them on. This time though, we're going to overlap the edges just a little bit like this. One way you can get a whole bunch of sticks cut pretty fast is to just bundle them up, tie the ends nice and tight, and cut it in half with a saw. As for how much siding there is, that's up to you. I wanted mine to the bottom of the window, so I just measured that to the top of the wall and mark on the tape where I need to stop. Um, so this, yeah, uh, this is a terrible way to glue them together. Don't do this. You're much better off by just putting little glue spots on the board seams as you work, and then go back and do little swirlies with a glue gun tip to smooth it all out. Alright, now line up your siding on the house and mark where you need to cut it off. Try to stay on a seam or in between seams if at all possible. Little tiny pieces of board try to break off. Then just trim to size with some scissors. Mark where the door and window are and cut them out too. Because it only came to the bottom of the window, I could get in there with scissors. Compare it to the house and cut a little bit more if you need to. You can always cut more, but it would be a real pain to try and add some back. What I found worked really well for those extra trims is just stick the tip of the X-Acto under the board that you're not cutting and then push down like you're cutting an onion. Okay, so see, this is how you do the hot glue. Little dots while working and then make swirlies, gently letting out more glue over the whole thing. Repeat the same steps on all the siding until it's cut to size. It's a little too perfect, so just take your X-Acto and scratch it. Like, a lot. If you cut chunks off, that's good too. This thing is supposed to be ramshackle after all. For color, I did wash the siding panels a little and they rolled up. I used black wash at random and on the cracks and then dirty brown on everything. Then double over your paper towel and press all of the excess moisture up. Do that to all of them. Now you gotta go black paint and Mod Podge mix all the foam stuff. This seals the foam and will help stiffen it a bit. For the fireplace, I went with a 1.5 inch width for the back wall and 1 inch for the side walls, putting the side walls to the inside of the back wall. For height, I just wanted a little higher than the roof. I just eyeballed it and marked it with my fingernail. Once they're cut to the height and size you like, Mod Podge the inside because it's going to be really hard to reach in here later. Let that dry and glue it up. This chimney is going to need something to sit on, so bring over a little chunk of EPS and push it up against the one that the house is sitting on. Put the chimney on the house and mark where it goes on the new EPS, and then glue it. Mark where the roof ends on the chimney so you know where to stop with the hot glue. Then put hot glue on the edge of the chimney and glue it to the house. I still want this house to come off of the floor, so I've got to split that chimney. Again, a little planning might make this easier, but I didn't know where I'd end up wanting it, so I waited until now to split. What I went with was the height of the wall is what stays with the floor section. Just bring your ruler against it and slice it off. Don't forget to cut the wall section off either side of the chimney too. It's kind of in a fiddly spot to work in, so a longer blade helps a lot. Use the mini again to gauge your height. Figure out where the hole for the fireplace is and cut that out. I decided a wall-to-wall -wall opening would work for me. And about waist high on the mini. So if we're going to go through all this trouble to make a fireplace, we might as well make it light up, right? These are tea lights. You get two of them for a dollar in the dollar store. They're easy to use and come with a battery, but they're also not great price-wise and you're mostly limited to using them just like they are. So here's some better stuff. For about $40, you can get wire, switches, battery holders, and 100 lights of whatever color you want with capacitors, but you do have to wire them up and buy batteries. We'll play with these another day. To use these tea lights, just stick something in the seam on the bottom there and pop out the workings. The diffuser stays with the cap, but you can just pull it out and stick it back to the bulb if you want to. In order to put this in the fireplace and still get to the switch, we're going to need to cut a hole. Using a long pokey tool, go through the middle of the fireplace floor so you can see where to put the hole on the bottom side. Put the bulb in the hole and draw a circle around the base, and then just dig out the foam. The hole you made with the pokey isn't going to be enough, so use the tip of a glue gun to melt out the hole a little bit wider. 
Just keep carving and fitting until you get it to sit totally flush with the bottom. When I say totally flush, I mean the switch, not the actual plastic base. The switch protrudes a little bit. If you haven't already, go ahead and trim off that extra bit of EPS around the chimney. You don't have to keep it square. I did that so it would still fit with my tile system. The part of the chimney on the house side needs a little bitty panel too. So just trim one to fit and glue it in. I probably should have done that earlier, but it's fine. Plus in this case, I made it fit on the inside, so I probably would have confused myself. Anyway, go ahead and Mod Podge that up. And while it's drying, cut out some bricks. Just cut a bunch of thin strips and then cut those down into little brick shapes. They don't need to be perfect. I used a slightly larger piece for the main part of the fireplace on the floor. I don't know what the thing's called. I wasn't super happy with the stone texture depth, so I went over it again with a pin and made sure to bring it down the edges. For some logs in there, just take a smaller dowel and hack it up a little bit to make it rough and round. If you use a round dowel here, it might look a little too perfect. Make them the same width as your fireplace, and as many as you think you need. I went with three for each fireplace. The main large stone I hot glued down. Then I decided I wanted a little shelf over the fireplace. Just a coffee stir stick and a couple bits of matchstick made that quick and easy. Hot glue it in place and move on to the brickwork. Any white glue is going to be fine here. I just prefer this tacky glue. It's really thick and pasty. Just paint it on where the bricks will go and then stick them on. You can leave them long and trim afterwards. So let's turn on the lights and get a peek. Drop the logs in and stack them up to see how you like it, and if you do, there you go. One down, more or less. Okay, so the little one's fireplace is on the inside. I did three quarter inch for the side panels and one and one quarter inch for the face of it. Glue it up the same as the other one. You just make sure to bring the rock texture around the sides. To make it fit inside those beams, just set it in there and smash it against the beams. That'll leave an impression for you to cut out. Just keep double checking the fit and cut a little bit more as needed. For the height, I want it just a bit taller than the peak of the roof, so I dropped a block of EPS on top and use a barbecue stick to stab a little mark. It's not exact, it doesn't really need to be. Line up the edge of the chimney with the lines on the mat, using the other line on the mat for the blade to cut it off square. For the face panel, all you need to do is glue one on and trim around it. No need to worry about measuring here. For the stone on the bare edge, you can just use the roller again if you want, and do the top too. I used the other fireplace's hole as a guide for this one. Just cut it out all the way to the bottom and then Mod Podge it up. When you glue this to the house, do not put glue in the little notches or on the top edge or this happens. So what you should do is just glue the edge, stick it in the house, then because it's foam you can lean it backwards and put some glue under the top edge there. Cutting it out is basically the same as the other one, though on this one you'll have to go just below that support beam. Once you get that done, mark the floor where it's supposed to be and then cut out the floor where it's marked. It won't fit together perfectly yet because the fireplace needs to sit in the floor. With the whole thing together, very carefully lift the top off while holding the fireplace where it goes. Lean it forward and put some glue down. Cutting out the hole for the light is the same, but I didn't have a lot of room to work with so I used some side cutters to trim off all the excess on the base of the light then lined it up to fit without going off the edge. The bricks are simple here, just cover everything in tacky glue and throw them down. There's not really any rhyme or reason to it. And you can let them run long on the edge too. The corners on the inside just leave short for now and then go back and fill in with small bits of brick once you've got the walls up. A little more glue around the base and more bricks to fill it in. The cobblestone of the main large one on the floor is a different texture from the rest of it, but I think it adds a pretty cool look. Once you've got them all how you like, mix some tacky glue with water and paint it on. You don't want it real runny, just enough to get in all the cracks. And uh, be sure to knock over your thing of glue from time to time, it really keeps the heart rate up. Once that's dried, about two hours or so, go ahead and coat it with Mod Podge and black. I guess the Mod Podge isn't really needed now, but you do want the black as a primer. Just try not to get it on the wood if possible. Now is also a good time to do any exposed EPS. 
To paint the wood floor, you basically have to repeatedly dry brush it so you don't ever soak it. Go with whatever color scheme you like. I tend to just nutmeg all the wood stuff in my builds as a base and adjust it from there. With this, I did the nutmeg first, and then some burnt umber going in the other direction with the brush strokes. Coat all the stonework in pewter gray. It doesn't need to be 100% coverage, a little black left behind is fine. When you do the gray in the fireplace and chimney, just be kind of sloppy with it so there are leftover black streaks. And then give the stonework a dry brush of granite gray. Hit the wood with a little bit of that too if you want to age it. So you know that terrible brush that's just way too soft and thin and garbage at everything? Well, this is a perfect use for it. Use it to stipple and streak some black on the fireplace fronts just above where the opening is for some soot. Then coat the whole inside of the fireplace and chimney with Mod Podge Gloss. This will help the light to reflect a bit so you can see it burning even without looking directly into the front of it. Alright, same way you did the fireplace to the outside of the houses with the pewter gray on everything, nearly to 100% coverage. Then a little granite gray, heavy dry brush. And a little antique white over that to kind of give you those weird white spots that stone buildings seem to have. Then do the inside of the bigger place and nutmeg for the interior wooden walls. For the windows, I took some of this granny grating, or plastic canvas, and sprayed it with gray primer, and then some flat black from a distance to give it a sort of old iron look. For the glass, just use some bits of blister pack plastic, that works pretty well. Cut out some little squares from both materials and stack the grating over top of the plastic, and then a drop of super glue in a few spots will bond these within seconds. Just make sure you don't get the super glue on the window portion itself or you'll have fogged glass. I wanted this in a diamond pattern instead of prison bar, so I turned it 90 degrees and then cut the corners off to make it square in the other direction. And then just hot glue them in. With this siding, just put glue around the edges and maybe a little in the middle and stick it on. If it's oversized or still needs to be trimmed, hold it up to the house where it goes and trace around the house and then cut that out. Once you're done cutting and gluing everything, you'll have these ragged ends. So just stick a stick on one side and then another on the other to make these little end caps. Don't worry about how long they are, you can snip those off later. Go around doing that on all four corners. To frame out the windows, you can do it two ways. You can do it this way, where you cut roughly 45 degrees and try to match it up like a picture frame and it takes forever. Or just butt them up against each other like this. This method is a whole lot easier and faster. The module says that the roof is thatch, but I really don't like doing thatch on houses because it just never looks right to me. One thing you can do is use these pre-made grass mats. They're only $3, but I think they're also only seasonal and also only at Walmart. Or this type anyway, I'm sure others exist. The only problem is that they're way too green, and the plastic underneath that static grass is super shiny. So to fix that, just go ahead and trim them to size, make a little notch for your chimney, then hot glue them down to some foam with the paper still on it so you don't ruin the foam, and heavily coat them in brown wash. Okay, so now you can attach that little wood chunk for the beam to the roof peak. The wood siding was still too bright for me, so I decided to do the same paint job on the siding as I did on the floor. Then went in with some English Ivy and Kelly Green to add moss anywhere there was a seam, a crack, a general spot water might collect, anything like that. So you never really realize how many styles of door exist until you go to make some. On this ramshackle, I figured a classic old slat door would work. Just lay out as many sticks as you need and glue a crossbeam over them. Pair it to the doorway and trim to fit and then paint it brown. I stuffed it up under the siding a little bit and glued it in. For the door handles, this pack of findings has these little rods with loops and some rings that make a really nice door handle. You can just stick the rod between the cracks of the boards, trim it off, and glue it down. Well, this is an awkward spot to cut it, but if I don't stop now, this thing is going to go on for over an hour. We'll finish this up next week. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you on the next one.